Welcome to Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Today on the program, we're going to talk brand. Nick Westergaard is here. He's the author of Brand Now, How to Stand Out in a Crowded, Distracted World. And his other book is called Get Scrappy, Smarter Digital Marketing for Businesses Big and Small. He also hosts a pretty damn fine podcast called On Brand, which you should subscribe to. We're going to talk about all things brand and dive into brand storytelling. I think we all conceptually understand what that is, but may not necessarily know what it looks like or actually how to do it. Uh, we'll learn all of that today on the show. Also on the show, I want to share with you a little insight I picked up last week at a workshop we did at Cornette about communication and collaboration, a lesson learned from improv comedy. That's coming up in a bit. This episode of Digging Deeper is brought to you by Julius. That's my influencer marketing software of choice. I mentioned that software more than others in my book on influencer marketing because it's the platform I've been using for years now to find influencers, engage with them, and manage campaigns. Julius has powerful filters that help me drill down and find just the gardening focused influencers in New England or people online who get excited about brick oven pizza. But I also uh, can get the mega influencers and celebrity influencers I might need to help launch a campaign or product across really any category. They also have an audience health feature where you can run a scan to see if influencers accounts might be uh, contain suspect suspect followers or engagement. So you can have better confidence in the influencers you do select for your campaigns. Speaking of which, Julius even has something called they call the enhanced profile feature. Now, anything that comes up in that search are influencers manually vetted and input by researchers on Julius's team. It's a big differentiator. They've got someone who's going through uh, the data and making sure that these folks are legit and making sure their contact information and things like that are up to date as well. All the elements of campaign management are in the software too. I love the fact that I can assign a purchase price or a value to every single social deliverable that's part of a campaign and automatically track it based on an agreed upon hashtag in the post and then get an ROI report, not just by campaign, not just by influencer, but every little element I can assign a number to it and then get an ROI report on that one activation based on the engagements and clicks and impressions and all that good stuff. You know, I wouldn't say this if it wasn't true, folks. You owe it to your brand or agency to do a demo of Julius today. Go to jason.online slash Julius and request one. That's jason.online slash Julius. Gang, if you're dialing into the live broadcast on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you can jump in the comment section there or at reply on the Twitter feed video and ask questions and interact with us here on the show. Jump into the comments and say hello and ask your question. I'll do my best to surface it so that we can uh, answer as we go along. You can ask your questions of Nick Westergaard today about brands, brand storytelling, branding, all things that start with the phrase brand. Um, Izzy House says hello today. A lot of other people coming in and chiming in. I can see the little thought bubbles as people type. So good to see everyone coming in on the show. Good morning, Izzy. Good to see you again as well. Does look like all the plumbing is working on all of the various live streams as we you know, broadcast this across the interwebs. Okay, folks, the word brand gets thrown around by a lot of people in the marketing space. Um, but in my experience, only a handful of people uh, of those people actually understand what brand means. Nick Westergaard does. Uh, he and his Iowa-based agency have been helping businesses become brands and brands become storytellers for years now. He's authored a pair of really good books. We mentioned one is Get Scrappy. The other one is Brand Now. And he's here today to talk to us. By the way, Jay Bear uh, called Brand Now the quintessential guide to modern branding. Nick, that's pretty impressive. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am great. It is good to be talking to you. You know, that Jay Bear writes a, a testimonial designed to go on the cover of a book. So he does. well played once again. He's like that. He's like that. He, <laughs> he, he said something similar about my influencer marketing book and, uh, and he, he's in fact on the back cover. So there, there you go. He strategically places his praise quotes. Um, and, and one would assume that, you know, we know Jay well enough to know he's not, you know, blowing smoke up our ass. So that's good. So let's start with the concept of brand, Nick, that work uh, comes to mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. We call a set of similarly named products a brand. Sometimes we call an entire company a brand. There are people who work in and build their own reputation uh, and call, call it personal branding. There's a subsegment of society that's dumb enough to permanently disfigure their skin with hot pokers to brand themselves like cattle. In the context of business today, though, what do you think brand means? 
Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up all of those uh, all of those different applications. Uh, I, I don't address the the latter in any of my work uh, yet. Yet, okay. uh, who's to say where I'll take my own personal brand? But I, I think an easy definition that I've I've always used is that it's any noun, a person, place, or thing that needs something from someone else, from another party. And uh, in in approaching the work uh, in in brand now, what I put together are what I call the seven brand now dynamics. But then in the second half of my book, I apply them to all of those different scenarios to uh, a small business, to a B two B brand, to a personal brand, to uh, a political brand. Um, no, no hot pokers yet, but uh, <laughs> but but all of those all of those different scenarios because I think sometimes in our thinking uh, we we miss some of the common denominators that I think brand thinking can benefit from. Yeah, you would think then though it it would be easy for businesses and their marketers to understand that you know sort of being consistent with their brand across communications channels is important. But in my experience, and, and I'm assuming you would agree this is a common problem, most brands maybe have an ad campaign tight, tightened up, but they don't necessarily align that with a website and social media and email marketing and corporate communications. You know, isn't part of good branding being consistent? And why do businesses have a problem following through on that? Well, I think part of it is the new media landscape that we've found ourselves in over the past, I guess, couple of decades now, because uh, we've got... Uh, new forms of of media cropping up left and right, and I feel like it's this great big microphone that marketers feel compelled to walk up to, and we haven't always done our homework before we do that. So we're doing this over here, this over there. As you noted, a new exciting campaign comes up, and now we're doing that, and it's it's not as connected as as cohesive as as it can or should be. So I think part of it is is the era that we find ourselves doing this in. Um, you know, as so many say, marketers haven't found themselves with less to do. We've got more to do with fewer resources. And I also think the other dimension of that when thinking, when all of this is happening, is, is with all that new stuff, I think there's also a tendency to think that this brand thing is an old antiquated thing or way of thinking that we that's not what we do anymore it's it's all about something else and i think you could uh, maybe apply that obituary to to traditional brand advertising mm -hmm. but brand building is is alive and well and and as critical as ever with all the different places that we have to do it True. The, you know, the, the consistent thread that, you know, I sort of referred to, I think is, is something that's really backed by the concept of brand storytelling. It's not just about having the same logo or font, the same look or feel, but also telling that brand story. Give us a good idea of what good brand storytelling does and maybe an example that might help us kind of see what good brand storytelling looks like. Well, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because story is so important and it, also suffers from being almost the king of the buzzwords because <laughs> we talk about story constantly and how important it is and we all kind of nod along with it but we don't really to invoke the name of the podcast or the the show here dig deeper to uh to to get at how we really go about utilizing uh, storytelling as a tool beyond just being something trendy that we talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's important to break it apart and understand the different pieces of it. In uh, uh, traditional narrative storytelling, we talk about the three parts, the beginning, middle, and end. Uh, when I talk about brand storytelling, I talk about context, contrast, and your call to action. Hmm. So the context or the context is the, the ecosystem uh, that this story is taking place in. It's your cast of characters. And this is one thing that uh, all of us marketers, God love us, we get wrong more often than not because we think brand storytelling, I even think that label uh, can be misleading because we think, great, I'm the main character of my brand story. And 
to be a really powerful story. It's actually the story of those that you serve, your audience. They're the main character in this story. And you are a helpful guide uh, along the way, if you look at the uh, the Joseph Campbell storytelling model. A lot of people think, okay, if it's if it's the customer's story, if it's the audience's story, then where, where do we go? Mm-hmm. If, if they're Luke Skywalker, you as a brand are Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I think a brand that does this, a uh, great job of this, uh, is Salesforce, because they are consistently telling uh, the the CRM uh, admin story, and Salesforce is the tool, is the sage mentor that's better connecting them with their customer data. So that's a great example there. Uh, the contrast in the story is the world as it exists before your brand came into this story and the world afterwards. Mm. Again, with that Salesforce model, you can kind of uh, see that coming to life there. They paint that picture, that contrast very clearly. And then finally, there's there's the call to action. And this is where it's most different from traditional storytelling, because a lot of stories wrap up. You think of movies, after the climax, there's only a couple minutes left after they blow up the Death Star. <laughs> Dorothy clicks her heels, and the movie's over two minutes later. I've timed it. Uh, But with brands, we have an opportunity to set up a story that gets continually told thereafter. Because when you've become a story brand or a mentor brand, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, to your your audience, you're setting up a relationship that's continually built. That's why Salesforce has such a strong connection with their people. That's why we point to brands like Apple and we roll our eyes and say, oh, Apple. But they are consistently telling stories yep. beyond being a well moneyed great big brand. If you look at everything they've always done, if you look at the why, I mean, you can say money and luck are some of it but they're hitting at something emotionally. And the single best tool for moving an audience emotionally is story. Mm -hmm. So find a way to find your audience's story, put them at the center of it and tell that story. That's great. Um, I have a follow-up question for that, but before I do, I want to make sure that I remind everyone, you can also ask questions if you have brand storytelling questions or, or questions about brand or other things for Nick. Jump in the comments section wherever you're watching the live stream and ask those questions. We, we said hello to Izzy House earlier. Chip Griffin jumps in and says a quick hello. He says he probably can't stay long, but he checked in with us, which is good. Matthew Hudgens, one of our uh, talented developers here on the Cornette staff, has chimed in and said howdy today as well. Uh, and so he might actually be in the room behind me right now. But anyway, he's watching along this morning. Glad to have Matt on uh to learn a little bit from you, uh, Mr. Westergaard. So my follow-up question is when uh, most brands think, or when most people, I guess, think of storytelling, uh, you know, when I think of a medium where there's an attention span, a book, a movie, television show, uh, maybe even a well-produced podcast, how does one tell stories in a world where our primary mediums, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, even Facebook, are built either for or to produce ADD? Yeah. Well, I mean, that is interesting when you look at the examples that we pivot to in stories. We've got great big long books. We've got movies that are are two hours. We've got seasons of TV shows. I think at the first level of the brand storytelling building block, you can look at what has made some of the more successful 30, 60 second commercials successful and see storytelling in their DNA. But beyond that, yeah. And then it it kind of gets real meta because then you've got these features in social networks called stories. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to remember storytelling principles that we just talked about in using these tools often called stories. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like beyond telling the entire story in a linear manner, laying out the whole thing, because you can shrink that down and look at 
you know, uh, some of the spots for for brands like Nike and see them move through this entire story uh, the same way you would in something like a movie. But when you come to these smaller pieces, uh, when you look at TikTok, when you look at Twitter, what you're really looking at is a fractal of the bigger <laughs> story. But because it's a fractal, a fractal it, by its nature isn't just some piece that you're lopping off of something. It is a small distilled piece of something bigger. So we have those same character dynamics, that same context that we were talking about, that same mentorship role. It may not be coming to life in a full story, but this quick visual, this quick loop of someone at their desk frustrated by uh, a CRM challenge mm -hmm. might be something that a brand storyteller like Salesforce might pick up on. Interesting. Bob Batchelor joins us from uh, LinkedIn today and says, great points on storytelling, authenticity, and context lead to enticing, engaging stakeholders. Do enough organizations really understand their audience? That's a good question. No. <laughs> and actually, I love that uh, Bob is coming uh, uh, via LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, LinkedIn it actually does a great job of this. And uh, Bob's question reminded me of that. LinkedIn in their own brand storytelling. Um, as, as you look at this uh, and, and see that they understand what people uh, are grappling with as well. And seeing uh, that the people looking for jobs. You also look at that industry overall. Uh, Indeed has a great campaign. And it's because they understand their people. And uh, to Bob's question, I don't think we understand this. This is another thing that brands often get wrong because it's partially not understanding our people. And it's also... I want to be careful how I say this because initially I was going to say being afraid to make them feel bad. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we should set out to make people feel bad, but right. you look at Indeed's brand storytelling and it is about people struggling mm -hmm. to get a job and there's real pain. And you could look at that and you could say, oh, that's, I don't know if we want to depress people that are <laughs> that are already, already down. You look at, uh, there's uh, stats from Gallup that show that I believe next to losing a spouse, mm -hmm. losing your job is one of the most traumatic things uh, that a person will go through. And oh, especially yeah. when we look at where we're at here in, in the middle of a pandemic. But I think you also have to acknowledge that human moment that people are grappling with and make it a part of your story. And when you do, uh, you can really connect with them. And Indeed does that it is a great example of that contrast that I was talking about earlier because they show the after part of that mm -hmm. story and, and people, people weeping at, mm -hmm. at getting a job. Yeah. But I think you can only do that if you tell the first part of that story, that's the hard hill that someone's climbing up. That's a great, it's a great way to illustrate it. Bring it to life. Thanks for the question there, Bob. Uh, all right. Uh, Izzy house also says the hero is supposed to struggle. That's why the guide is so important. How about that? There Absolutely. Makes that well said, Izzy. Izzy you said it stuff. shorter than I did. <laughs> all right, Nick, I'm the CEO of a company. Let's say I sell, uh, scented COVID masks that prevent you from having to smell your own breath all day. Uh, uh, I'm going to call them don't smell me. Uh, you, you march in and tell me that I need to tell my brand story. I say to you, no, I need to sell more units of my damn masks. So what do you say to the MBA and investor driven executives who think marketing is essentially sales and they just want more of that part without spending the energies on actually branding or marketing? I'd say, okay, I know nothing about this. Walk me through why I need this. Mm. And I bet that individual, that analytical type, without being prompted, and I, I can't do it in my prompt, would start to tell a story in some form or another. 
even if it's not okay imagine this uh, typical storytelling stuff even if they bring up a case study even if they cite research there's <laughs> there's a story in there so i would first uh, get them to start storytelling on their own because i bet they would end up doing that. You know, that's a that's a really clever way to do it because I can imagine you asking the CEO that and the first thing they say is, my breath stinks and I don't like smelling my own mask. And that's well, a story. It, it's funny because you you give me this example and I think I, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm a breath conscious person. It, it <laughs> freaks me out. Uh, I've got uh, Altoid right here by my desk. I've got them out in my car. But I have gotten into this habit <laughs> of when I when I put the mask on, I, I pop an Altoid first, and I realize I've realized recently I'm doing that for me. You are that, you, that, you have uh, don't smell me kind of the starter kit there. That's good. I, I do. So I, I feel like that's a story that there's probably folks that would identify with, and that's the really cool thing about the science of story is that there's all kinds of amazing things that happen non-breath related chemically <laughs> uh, in our brains. When we see a story that we identify with, we think, ah, oh, that happened to me. I'm one with Nick or Jason or whoever's telling me that story. And I'm going to do what happens next. So if next I buy the don't smell me mask instead, I think, geez, I should look at that. Boom. That's good. So uh, outside of horrible breath, what are the uh, red flags a business owner or marketer should look for to know that they've got a branding problem? What are what are the things that you need to, 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 to see uh, to know, wait a minute, I need somebody to come in and help me fix this? Well, I'm glad you set up that we already solved the breath thing. Yeah, that's, there we go. Uh, it's done. <laughs> good. Altoids and masks. We're going to just mix them up together and we got our don't smell me. Yeah, is, but it, it, it's interesting because it's 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 a lot of little things and and mediocre things which aren't always easy to see. Uh, stagnation in in growth. A lot of your metrics that you're looking at there. Wow, we've we had a real impact and we've leveled off, or we've come down a bit and we're leveling off. I'd say. Any of the leveling speaks to something else because those uh, big spikes are often about uh, launch, are about new features, are about some of those things that are easier to see. But what's happening in between those movements, whatever your baseline is, is, is often the brand that you are. So raising that baseline is where being that strong brand that people want to be a part of in between those moments is is important and finding ways that they can continue to connect with you uh, as well are are key. Um, I mean, I can you know get this back in the story too. Uh, Salesforce has an admins podcast that mm -hmm. even beyond, oh, I have this software. They wouldn't like me calling them software, but I have Salesforce now. <laughs> um, and I've solved that problem. They've got an admins podcast where they talk to people like me struggling with the stuff that I'm struggling with every week. So it's a part of my life because I'm a part of that brand because that brand is built around me. That's nice. Well, uh, as always, well, first of all, before, before we go, uh, uh, our, our good friend, Laura Fitton, Pistachio, jumps in today. Miss both your faces and brainses. Well, Laura, you don't have to miss our brainses because we're right here. So, and we, you know, write stuff and things like that. But yes, we miss you too, Laura. I uh, hope that we can get back to an event some at some point where we can both hang out with you and see you again. And you can not miss our faces as much. Um, and we'll have good breath. Uh, we'll have outstanding breath outstanding breath because of our don't smell me masks. Mm -hmm. I love it. Somebody's going to trademark that crap and I'm going to be, you know, another great idea out the door. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, Nick, as always, great insights and advice, my friend. Where can people find your books and such on the interwebs? The best place to go for all things is nickwestergard.com. That's Westergard with two A's. You can find my two books there. You can find uh, my latest writing there. And 
uh, a link out to the On Brand podcast too. Well, and if you can't find them there, you can definitely find them in the comments because I just pasted links to Nick Westergaard online, Nick on LinkedIn, the uh, On Brand podcast, and to his author page on Amazon where you can get to both of the books. Nick, as always, thank you so much for the wisdom. Please tell Megan I said hello and thanks for being here today, man. I will do that. Thank you, sir. All right. Nick Westergaard. How about that? On Brand is the name of the podcast. Go subscribe to that. Those of you who are watching uh, on live or if you're listening on the recorded on the podcast version, you're a podcast listener, right? So go check that out because it's good stuff. Um, okay. Uh, still, I'm still hoping, by the way, that all of you will also get a copy of my book. Uh, Winfluence is uh, now available on audiobook, uh, and uh, it's also available on Amazon and on all the online retailers. So if you want to go get it there, you can. But the audiobook is actually uh, I've got a I've got a special thing for you, and I don't think that I did a, a graphic for this. So I'm going to have to give you this verbally. Uh, if you're watching on the screen, you've got the jason.online slash audiobook, and that'll get you to audible.com where you can get the audiobook. However, today, at least for, and I think it's for the next week, I have a special deal with you. You're not going to believe this. My audiobook publisher, Gildan Media, uh, is offering the audiobook up for just five bucks for a limited time. Uh, you cannot eat a fast food meal for that uh, these days, folks. So there's a, a special URL for that deal. Uh, it's over on audiobooks.com, but the URL to get you right to the page where you can get the Winfluence audiobook, narr narrated by yours truly, by the way, uh, is jason.online slash audio deal. So jason.online slash audio deal is where you go. And I think that's for a limited time. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it's one of those, like if you buy this, you know, Winfluence for five bucks, I think you get two more free. They've got a couple of other deals going on for a limited time special thing on that page. Five dollars for the audiobook, and you get to hear me narrate the whole thing. How about that? Not in this voice. Um, again, uh, jason.online slash audio deal is where you go to get that deal. And I think it's good for another week. So go grab that audio book. And if you want to go to uh, the other place where you can grab the book book, you can go over here, jason.online slash buy uh, and use the code falls 20 to get 20% off. That's the hard copy book. Uh, if you want that one, you could go to Amazon and get the Kindle version and all that stuff too, if you'd like, I would appreciate it. I would love for you to read the book and give me some feedback on it. It's uh, doing fairly well from what I understand. Uh, on the uh, sales channels, they don't tell me anything other than it's doing well. They don't give me numbers, which is probably fine. But anyway, go get the book. I'd love for you to, to, to share those ideas with you, and I'd love for you to give me feedback on them. Okay, last week, my colleagues at Cornette and I participated in a little professional development workshop on communication and collaboration with Sue Gillen. She is the co-managing director of the BLAC internship program, which is a consortium of sorts of ad agencies with the mission of preparing and supporting young black creative thinkers to thrive and lead in the creative industry. Cornette is, is one of the charter members of that initiative, and I'm excited uh, for our first cohort of interns, which are actually coming this summer. But aside from that, Sue is also a former creative director at Second City, the famed comedy theater and impro improvisational acting troupe based in Chicago, among other cities. She took us through some exercises to improve our internal communication and collaboration. Now, being a fan of comedy, I was super excited to learn from her, and she did not disappoint. If you know anything about improv, you may know or have heard the concept of yes anding. It's the actors, as the actors play out their scene, each making up the next line and extending the story as they go, the other actor's response has to be yes and. There's no such thing as saying no or correcting each other or pulling the story in a different direction. You respond mentally as yes, what he or she said is right and good in the direction we're heading, and here's what I can add to that. So Sue challenged us to think of that concept in terms of how we collaborate on ideas, respond to feedback, respond to deadlines and all the odds and ends that can get in the way of true internal communication. I wanted to share that idea with you because if you think about it, if our response to our colleagues is to acknowledge what they've said, um, they, the need they have, the perspective they bring to the table, and then add to it, even if adding to it is to remind them of the challenges we're going to have to account for as a result, we have more positive communications. We have less conflicts. Now, I'm a perfect example, Mia culpa here, of the person who needs this adjustment. Oftentimes, when the account team comes to me with a need or a question, I have a tendency to respond negatively. 
um, either we, we can't do that because of X or I don't have time to do that by then because of Y. What the workshop did for me was help me see that it's probably better if I say, yeah, we can do that, but we need to make sure we also shift this project or that deadline to accomplish it. Or, yes, I can do that. Help me figure out which projects to shuffle the priority for so I can make appropriate time for that work. And just that sort of subtle nuance of responding with yes first and then, you know, sort of adapting, uh, you know, the conversation to account for the things that may have sparked that negative, I think is going to make uh, communicating with me a lot easier, which I want to do that for my colleagues because I love them all. And I want to make sure that I'm not a cog in the wheel and I can be, you know, Mr. Cranky Pants sometimes being one of the elder statesmen around here with my big gray beard and all these young pups who are a lot more nimble and sometimes a lot more smart. Well, most of the time, a lot more smart than I am. Uh, but anyway, I just don't want to be, you know, the fly in the ointment. So I'm trying to be better about that. And that's what the workshop did for me. So it, it helps me see that it's probably better if I say yes first and then figure it out from there. Food for thought for you. So you can potentially get better with your communication and collaboration as well. If you're watching or listening to the show not during the 11 a.m. Eastern Time Hour on Tuesdays, you've not joined us live. Remember, we broadcast the podcast with a live stream. To join us live, just follow me or Cornette on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, or look for Digging Deeper on YouTube, and you'll get that handy live notification when we stream. That's normally at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, or I'm sorry, 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday mornings. Look for me online at Jason Falls, and you can typically find Cornette online at Team Cornette. If you'd like a quick link to our YouTube channel, you can go to cornette.online slash dig deep. That's cornette.online slash dig deep. You can also catch the show as an audio podcast after the fact on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, and more. Find easy links to subscribe to the audio version at cornette.online slash digging deeper. Next week on the show, folks, it's going to be a real treat. Ken Ramanzi will be with us. He is the retired CEO and board director of BNG Foods. That company includes Crisco, Cream of Wheat, Green Giant, Ortega, and a bunch of other everyday brands we know and love. I asked Ken to join us to talk about the C-Suite's perspective on marketing, social media, influencer marketing, and beyond. I'm really excited to expose that mindset to all of us so we can perhaps communicate up the chain more effectively and ensure we're checking their boxes for success, not just ours. So former CEO of B&G Foods, Ken Ramonzi, next week on Digging Deeper. That will be live on the interwebs on Tuesday, May 18th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. If you can't be there live, subscribe to the YouTube channel at cornet.online slash dig deep and watch the replay on demand. Or you can subscribe to the audio feed via podcast at cornet.online slash digging deeper. That's going to wrap up this edition of Digging Deeper. Make creativity your business advantage. Nope. Oh. Hold on. See, I tried to be sly about that closing thing and and hit the buttons the right way without screwing it up, but I screwed it up. And and normally when I stop and say this is the point in the program where Jason screws up the outro, I get it right. So let me try it again. This is the point where Jason screws up the outro. Let me see if I can get it right this time. Oh my goodness. One, two, three. I hit the wrong thing. I hit the intro, not the outro. So that's going to do it for this edition of Digging Deeper. Make creativity your business advantage. If you like the episode, share it with a friend or colleague who might as well. Digging Deeper is a production of the Cornette Group. Find us online at teamcornette.com. Our executive producer is Christy Heiler. Creative director is Jason Majeski. Associate producer, Ashley Harris. Our theme music is composed by Rex Banner. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Thanks for joining us, folks. Until next time, I'll see you on the interwebs. <laughs>